have legislation to see if there's any barriers to what program model you want to implement. And if there's any barriers, then you'd have to see um, what would it would take to address those barriers. What we're looking to do is um, look at programs that are really ending youth homelessness and and taking program models and analyzing them to see what can be replicated in other communities. And we're looking into the housing component for youth. Uh, there's something called um, Homeless Prevention Record Rehousing Program, HPRP, that some communities are using for youth. And it's the idea that um, it's either preventing youth from losing their housing where they're at now or getting youth that are on the streets that are homeless um, into housing pretty quickly and with services um, in place, providing um, rental assistance and whatnot for like up to 18 months to get youth um, in stable housing for hopefully, you know, for the, for the rest of their lives. So we're really focusing on that housing component um, and looking at the runaway and homeless youth programs to see what regulations need to be changed that better assist youth. Um, we're looking at the component of reunification and how that works. So if a youth goes to your program, um, what can be done to try to reunify them with their family or even like a family friend that's an adult or something like that or connect them with that person because we find that youth do better when they're connected to um, like an adult that they trust and know um, and see if that youth is able to get into some sort of stable housing. Right, that's a lot with this article um, by the You Gotta Believe people were saying that they're, they're lobbying for instead of independent status and interdependent status where the youth doesn't sign off um, to be independent, but they sign off to be at least connected to one person. Um, so yeah, I think that's huge. And as far as our community goes, as far as I understand, um, we do have a lot of really good things in place with the churches and with um, the House Neighborly Services, um, but nothing specifically for the, that teen, um, you know, say ages 15, 14 to 21, 22. So, um, Okay. Okay. And so, like, for instance, if you talk to a couple of churches and went to them with your ideas, you can find out from them how they might be able to support your efforts. You know, sometimes there's um, people in the church that want to do volunteer work with kids, or maybe there's funders in the church that want to help. You know, the, the church might be offering a small grant or something like that. You never know. Yeah, again, I don't, I just... I could be completely naive. I don't think I'm needing the the volunteer or the money aspect. I'm I'm just very curious about maybe other places that have done this and how to get past the legalities of can we bring a kid in that we know is homeless because we're also we've also been really involved with the homeless people here and talking to them and saying do you, you know finding out if there really are street homeless teens um, and if we know of them giving them that access during the day in an internet cafe so that they can be learning things, but then also giving, which I think would be fine. I think we wouldn't have any trouble there, but then giving them a place to sleep at night as well is where I, I'm afraid we would run into some legal problems. And, and again, I don't know. I'm, I'm just wondering if, if you have some examples or um, know of other places that maybe we, we could look at their model of what they've done. Um. Look at Urban Key. They're in Denver, Colorado, but they do great work. Okay. Um, contact them to see. Say the name uh, again. Urban Peak. Urban Peak? Yeah. Okay. Um, contact them. Um, see if you all have a something that's called a right to shelter law. Okay. Um, because what these programs are sort of designed to do is to be alternatives for youth going into, into the child welfare system as long as you do, do, do um, complete due diligence in trying to um, contact their parents and asking for permission for them to access your services. 
services. Okay. Um, otherwise, if a youth is um, like under 18 or so, probably younger, but let's say under 18, the child welfare system would have to get involved. So you'd want to probably contact your local child welfare agency to find out what what sort of coordination with them would have to take place. Okay. Uh, if, uh, so, and so there could be some workarounds with them. That sounds great. No, that sounds like some good information for me. Thank you. Sure. I appreciate this. Um, so, thanks. Okay, <laughs> Thank you for welcome. your time. Yeah, if you have any other questions, just shoot me an email. Okay, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Bye.